What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Mullet Man episode. Today is so hot. It's like 104 degrees here in Texas. So I'm going to be doing something inside today. A lot of you have been commenting. Um, back in turkey season I got a bunch of comments on um, how do I preserve the turkey fan in the beard. Um, so today I'm going to do that. I just pulled out four fans out of the freezer. Um, got a few beards and then the Jake fan from uh, Colorado when I went with Outlaw and I'm actually going to use that as my new turkey decoy fan. So I'm going to let these thaw out a little longer and then we're going to go into the office. I set up a table in there because it was just too hot out here um, and it takes a while to do four. It takes a while to do one. So we're going to do that and then I'll take you in the office, show you all the supplies you need and then we'll get started on how to preserve a turkey fan. So some of the supplies that you need for um, doing this project is you want some borax, just some plain old uh, borax. I got this at the dollar store and then I couldn't find any of my wire brushes. So I got a small, a little small wire brush. You can get in the little cracks and crevices and stuff. And then you want a big wire brush to do most of the big work. Um, so this is the end product right here. This is a uh, fan that I did with my buddy Greg. Uh, he showed me how to do it and um, that's what it looks like at the end you can buy the little turkey kits um, where you can put the fan and then hang the beard below it I just haven't done it yet um, so and then if you want some little thumbtacks you're gonna end up putting it on a cardboard box I got a few cardboard boxes that we'll lay it out on and uh, tack it too so it can hold its shape once it dries and then you want some kind of um, epoxy or putty or something that's going to hold it there and kind of seal up uh, the part that had the meat and fat on it. So I don't know what, I don't remember what we use here but uh, you can tell it's just some court, some kind of little putty that uh, hardens so it worked out pretty good but I just went and got some 100% silicone, um, water resistant stuff, almond color, just a neutral color. So I'm going to go grab these turkey fans real quick while they're still thawing and uh, bring them in here and show you the step-by-step -step process on how to preserve a turkey fan. So I went ahead and grabbed uh, the one that was the most thought out. The other ones are still kind of sitting in the sun. So first I want to show you um, on the beards. And I do have my northern knife today, um, but you really need something really tiny to get into the little cracks and stuff. I'm going to show you how it does. I'm going to show you why you need a small knife for this but uh, just to have one with the super sharp blades works works really well for this so um, I cut these beards off you can tell they're um, don't have hardly any meat or anything on them so what I'm going to do is go ahead and you know, take your little Tupperware and, uh, and you just want to put some borax in it just enough to kind of cover the bases of the um, of the beards and all this does is dry out all the fat and uh, whatever, whatever else might be on there so you just want to bury those in the borax and uh, let those sit there just till until your process is complete um, it usually takes about four or five days to complete this process so um, I'm gonna give you all the steps you need to know to do this but I won't actually be doing the full process I'll show you the end product and get you to where you need to be for the end product. So first things first, you take your fan and it's still not completely thawed out but this meat's kind of freezer burnt so you just want to take and start working at all of the meat on the back of this turkey fan. Just take as much off as possible and get as close to the bottom of the feathers as you can. So you'll see once I get all these um, all these feathers off you'll be able to tell and also another thing, um, it just depends on you, but these back feathers right here, behind on the back side of on the back side of the turkey fan, you do not need those at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off. You can see all those big uh, bases of the big fan feathers. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these small feathers off because you don't need them. You won't see them in your mouth, 
and you won't see them if it's hanging on the wall. So go ahead and take these off and that just kind of cleans up your whole situation of uh, cleaning this fan. So there, most of those back feathers just come off. Um, I'm gonna get feathers all over my office, but that's okay. I'd rather be in here than sweating outside. So just keep working at it and um, get as much of this meat off as possible. I'm gonna get a little trash so I can put all. Like I said, just take your time, no rush. Just start cutting all of this junk away. It'll make your life so much easier whenever the process is done. It won't ever stink. It won't ever mold or mildew. Or So another thing that you can do, you can see that's a lot of feathers on the front. Um, on this one, we actually took all these front feathers off. Just kind of makes it more clean and um, a lot thinner. These front feathers add a lot of uh, girth to the to the fan itself. So you can take it off layer by layer. Um, I'll make this one to where it's similar to that, where it just has the uh, most of the front feathers on there. So we'll just come in here and cut those off and uh, that exposes it exposes a lot more of the meat um, that you're trying to get off of this and without taking those off it's pretty much impossible to uh, get that meat off so take those front feathers off um, you can do it however you want to but uh, this is what I recommend so then you just want to work the front side and get as much meat off the front side as you can as well. You can see it won't open up completely right now just because it's pretty stiff, but that's gonna be close to the end product um, after you put borax on it and dry everything out and then seal it up. So take a few more of these feathers right here off. Just like that, super simple. Just any red meat that you see, just go ahead and trim that off. Just like that. Now, after you cut off as much meat as possible with the knife, you can see the, uh, the back of the pin feathers all that yellow stuff right there is fat so what you want to do is get in between each feather that you can and just make a slit on either side and this will help the process of um, when you take the wire brush to it so you just want to cut on either side as best you can just kind of loosen all that fat up in between each of the each of the uh, base of the feathers and that just really makes your life a lot easier whenever you go uh, go at it with the uh, wire brush. Now, after you get that step done, you can kind of spread it apart. You can see all the gaps in between each of the bottom of the feathers. That's when you want to take your big wire brush, and this can get messy, so just watch out. It'll fling fat everywhere. But you just want to start brushing. You just want to start brushing in between the feathers. See, you can already see how it kind of opens up each of the feathers. You can kind of take it and spread them apart like that. Just be easy with it. You don't want to mess the feathers up. And uh, you can be pretty pretty rough with the uh, with the wire brush but just um, you can kind of feel out your limitations on how hard you can do it uh, 
you're not gonna get it you're not gonna get all the fat off that's just part of it um, it's impossible to get every little piece of fat and meat off of it but you just want to do the best you can um, so your end result is what you're looking for so now I'll take the uh, little wire brush and just kind of get in in between the feathers and try to get any access stuff that the big brush couldn't get and then uh, and then we'll be ready to borax it and let it dry so now I am pretty done pretty complete with the um, the wire brush part that stuff the, the stuff that just stays on there it's just it's not gonna get off and that's where the borax comes in uh, dries all that stuff out so you can see it's all flimsy now um, you can see kind of how it's gonna look but <clears throat> beautiful fan so if you guys have any uh, turkey fans in the freezer and you don't know what to do with it or you've been waiting to find a way to preserve it this is the way you want to do it you might have a different way and if you have a better way or easier way leave it in the comments and I would definitely try it out and now what I'm gonna do is take a piece of cardboard that we are going to lay these on we're gonna let them sit for about four four to five days um, just let this borax do its job and all it does is just kind of dry everything up so I'm gonna lay a little bit of borax where the bottom side of the fan is gonna be get all the you can see it kind of coats itself uh, sticks to the fat that's already there and uh, in this process um, you don't have to open it up and lay it out and pin it up uh, this part just just is for drying that meat and fat out so you just want to coat everything that has some meat or fat um, exposed and you just want to let that sit that's good just like that so that's all you're looking for right there um, just cover the bottom and the top of the bottom of the base of the turkey fan so now I'm gonna go get another one do the same thing and I'm gonna pin it up for you so I can show you how to pin it once it's been four or five days and the turkey fan has dried out the base of it has dried so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I have four uh, four fans to do today so I'll go ahead and do this one and then I'll pin it up just so I can show you guys what you're looking for um, as far as whenever whenever the borax does its job and you can dry out um, and then you're ready for, for pinning it. So go ahead and take care of this one and then uh, I'll see you guys in the next process. Got done with this one, you can see, same as the last one. Just clean it up as much as you can. So we're gonna say that this turkey fan um, has been sitting in borax for four to five days and uh, we're ready to pin it up. So once you take it out of the borax, it'll still be flimsy. You'll dust all the uh, dry borax off of it uh, the best as you can and then you wanna lay it out. Lay your turkey fan out just the way you want it to dry so if you want it like this then you want to lay it out like that just exactly how a turkey fan would open its fan uh, if it was strutting so i try to do that as best i can um, just pull in the feathers where you think they fit and uh, you can tell you can tell how the feathers are supposed to go and that right there looks just about perfect to me so I'm gonna let that be the way that it is going to dry and we'll take a few thumbtacks so the vein of the feather it comes all the way up to the top you want to get down by the base of the vein and just put it put that tack right there 
by the vane so it can't fold back up. So all you're doing is creating it to where the fan can't suck back up. So you don't have to put a ton in, um, just for the first, I don't know, first five or six feathers going up and then the rest will kind of do, do what they're supposed to do. Come in here and uh, you're not gonna hurt the feather. It's not going to uh, make a big hole in it or anything like that, so don't worry about that. But, uh, so yeah, that just kind of holds the feathers in place. Um, make sure they stick down into the cardboard. Just like that. You can put some um, on the top, but it's not necessary as long as you keep your cardboard flat. It's not going to fall forward or anything like that. So that is how you're going to dry your turkey fan and I'll let that sit for uh, probably a week but um, you can take it off as soon as you feel that it's dry. I'm gonna let it sit for a few days um, like I said we're acting as if this is already dry but once I pin it up I'm gonna let it sit for a few days and just after all that borax is off just make sure everything's dried out so I'm gonna let that sit for another few days and then we will take our putty or silicone or whatever you use and um, put it just around where the meat would go. You want to keep all these pin, all the you want to keep all the feathers um, to where you can see them. So as you can see on this one, it is just around the base where all the feathers come down and meet at the bottom. So that is all you want to cover right there, and then let it dry, and then you can do whatever you want with it. Um, it's great to hang on the wall, use it as a turkey decoy, put it in your strutter. Um, it works 100 times better than those plastic or vinyl, whatever kind of fans that they put in the strutters these days. So um, I'm going to use this Jake fan as my new strutter decoy fan. Um, it'll pull in those tongs when they see that Jake, uh, Jake fan. The Jake fan, you can tell the the uh, top feathers are always longer than the side feathers. The side feathers are gonna be a little jagged and short on a good mature tom. All the feathers are gonna be equal and it'll create a perfect half circle. So that is the basics of how to preserve your turkey fan. Uh, leave it in the comments if you wanna see more videos like this. I have four or five bobcats in the freezer that I can do um, and I can show y'all how I preserve those skins um, I am going to let it cool off because that is something that I have to do out in the shop because it is just too nasty to do in here. So um, I can definitely do that when it cools down a little bit. But y'all leave it in the comments if y'all want to see stuff like that. And leave it in the comments if you want to see more of this stuff. Um, there's always something that I can be uh, preserving or uh, showing you guys my techniques. Um, they're not always the best techniques. But they work for me, so they're the best for me. But I'd love to hear how you guys do y'alls. Um, I know there's a million different ways to do it. So if there is one easier that I don't know about, then leave it in the comments and I will definitely try. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks to everybody that supported this channel. Make sure you go to my merch site, mulletman.net. Get you some Mulletman merch. We got some new stuff coming out. It's not out yet, but stay tuned. It's coming soon. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and remember, eat good.